This video series is for people who have never used a topographic map, or topo map for short. Being able to read and use a topo map is a basic wilderness skill. Let me provide an example. Looking at this map, I see narrow valleys separated by eroded ridges. The slopes are steep and the ridge tops are hundreds of feet above the valley floors, but I could cross over a ridge if I had to. Most of the area is covered with trees, but there are clearings in the valley bottoms. The roads are mostly just tracks in the dirt. This piece of the planet covers about two and a half miles east-west by a mile and a half north-south. I see other things on this map, but I'm sure you get my point. This map is full of information that a hiker can use. I'd like to show you how to see what I see and how to use a map like this to find your way across a landscape. I'll start with a promise. If you learn what I discuss in this video series, and if you start using topo maps on your hikes, someday soon you'll stop seeing a confusing mess of lines. Instead, you'll instantly see the place you're hiking through as clearly as a bird circling overhead. Add a compass and you can find out where you are and navigate to the place you want to be. In the United States, the standard topo maps are produced by federal agencies. In this first video, I'll focus on one element of the standard U.S. topo map, the brown squiggly lines. We know we're looking at some sort of mountain peak because it's labeled as a peak, and clearly the brown lines have something to do with the fact that it is a peak. Let's find out exactly what those brown lines mean. To illustrate what a contour line is, I'll use this plastic funnel. I quickly added a few lines around the funnel. Each line marks all the points that are the same distance up from the wide end. That's all a contour is, the contiguous points that share the same elevation. A contour line shows where those points fall on a map. If you turn the funnel so you can see it from the narrow end, those lines turn into circles. Suppose I set the funnel upside down on a counter and draw lines a half inch up, one inch up, an inch and a half up, and so on, a lot more carefully than I actually did. When I was done, from the side, the lines would look like this. And from above, the lines would look like this. A hill in the real world isn't as symmetrical as a funnel, so the contour lines on the map are wigglier. But the same way that every line on the funnel is a circle, contour lines are closed loops. When they extend off your map, on a bigger map, they'd be closed loops. If you ever walk an entire contour in the real world, you'll end up exactly where you began. The drawing of the upside-down funnel, seen from above, has other lessons to teach. Since you know what a funnel looks like, you can guess that for two adjacent concentric circles, the inner circle represents a higher contour. In the same way, real-world travel from an outer contour to an inner contour means you're going uphill. A different way to say this is that the terrain inside a contour line is higher than the terrain outside. On the funnel, an outer circle clearly represents a lower contour. In the same way, Real-world travel from an inner contour to an outer contour means you're going downhill. Or to turn my earlier statement on its head, the train outside a contour line is lower than the train inside. Let's squeeze a little more information out of these basic drawings. In this sketch, you can see three closed loops without any loops inside them. I'll add arrows so you're sure to see which ones. If the innermost loop in a series is the highest loop, it follows that these three innermost loops circle high points on the landscape. The loops themselves aren't high points, but the high points are somewhere inside them. And based on what you already know, all three arrows are pointing uphill. But how much uphill? Let's assume that the outermost contour line represents the base of the hill. For the middle and right arrows, getting to the top involves crossing three more contour lines, but for the left arrow, getting to the top involves crossing two more contour lines. That should tell you that the middle and right peaks are about the same height, but that the peak on the left is lower than the other two. The more contour lines you cross going up or down, the greater the elevation change.
In the real world, simple ideas don't always work, and that's also true for contour lines. I just claim that inner loops are higher than outer loops. That's certainly true for Ute Mountain in northern New Mexico, which you see here, and it's almost never not true, but sometimes an inner contour line is lower than an outer contour line. The closed craters of volcanoes are a good example. Once you get to the lip of the crater, the ground slopes down rather than up. This is a picture of Capulin Mountain, a volcano in northeast New Mexico where the crater is obvious. If you want to see it for yourself, this is a national monument and you can even drive to the top. And this is how a topo map shows a volcano. As you make a mental trip up the side of the volcano, you keep crossing contours inside the previous contours until you get to the rim of the crater. Then as you walk down into the crater, you may cross a contour that's lower than the previous line. This map lets you know that the innermost contour line means down, not up, by attaching tiny short lines to the downhill side of the contour line. I refer to those short lines as tick marks, or simply ticks. The tick marks on actual contour maps tend to be small, so you need to keep an eye out for them. Here are three large holes in the ground in southern New Mexico. You have to look carefully to see the tick marks marking the contours of depression, but once you see them, you'll realize you're looking at holes, not hills. Here's the north end of the Kilbourne Hole, one of the three holes in the previous map segment. I zoomed in because just north of the hole, there's a smaller depression where the tick marks are obvious. If you keep looking, you'll see a couple more places where the train goes down rather than up. If you're not seeing those places, pause the video and go full screen. The holes you're looking at are volcanic features, but if you live in limestone country, sinkholes are marked the same way. Just remember that lines with ticks mean that inside is down, not up. So, let's modify a previous principle. Let's go back to this map of Cabazon Peak and apply what you've learned. The contour lines are wigglier than the lines in the funnel drawing, but do you see the similarities? The inner loops mark higher terrain than the outer loops. The lower contour lines are spaced farther apart than the upper contour lines, just like for the funnel. You might guess that Cabazon Peak is shaped like an upside-down funnel. And you'd be right. Here's Cabazon Peak. Notice how the lower slopes are fairly gentle, but the upper slopes are almost vertical. It looks like a truncated upside-down funnel. In the next video, I'll show you how to recognize ridges, valleys, and other topographic features from contour lines. Meanwhile, if you're new to this game, get hold of a topo map for a place you know and use it as your textbook. Compare the contour lines on your map with the place around you. You'll be surprised how quickly those brown lines turn into a language you understand. Mm -hmm.